Let's look at Illustrator's pen tool. In this tutorial file, we have two layers. One of the layers is a template that we'll follow. Vector artwork is made up of paths. Paths are made up of anchor points and the line segments between them. You'll create a path by placing multiple anchor points on the artboard while simultaneously creating the curved line segments between them. The solid, curving gray line is your desired path shape. Small orange squares indicate where anchor points should be placed. Click on the Direct Select tool, then click on the Pen Tool icon in the Illustrator toolbox. Hold down the mouse button to see the other tools nested with the Pen Tool. While continuing to hold down the mouse button, move the cursor over the small tear-off tab containing the triangle marker and release the mouse. You should now have a small panel containing four tools, including the Pen Tool. Before beginning the path, Reset the colors in the toolbox to their default, black stroke, white fill. Next, select the fill color and set it to none, so we're left with no fill and a black stroke outline. Next, select the black stroke and confirm that it's set to one point weight in the stroke palette. I've zoomed into part one. Using the pen tool, begin by placing the tool at point A of the straight vertical line. Click once to create an end point, then place another anchor point at B. Now, let's deselect this path by holding down the Command key Mac or Control key Windows to toggle the pen tool to the most recently used selection tool. Now click on an empty section of the artboard in order to deselect the path. Next, in part two, we'll use the same technique to draw the greater than sign. Here, you'll create six anchor points connected by straight line segments. Starting at A, work clockwise around the shape, adding anchor points until you return to A. Click again on that first anchor point to close the path. Before deselecting the path, click the Swap Fill Stroke button in the toolbox. This swaps the shape's black stroke for a black fill. Deselect the artwork and swap the fill-in stroke back to a black stroke and no fill. In part three, you'll use a similar technique to create the winding curved path, except here you'll drag outward from the anchor point in order to curve the line segments. Start at A, the uppermost point of the curved path. Notice the template shows a square anchor point with two direction lines extending from it in either direction. Click at point A to begin the curved path, but don't release the mouse button. Instead, drag in the direction of the orange dot on the end of the lower direction line. When the direction lines closely match the template, release the mouse and move on to the next anchor point on the path. Notice how the curved line segments expand in a clockwise fashion, expanding the radius of the curve. Also note that some of the direction lines are not of equal length. Don't worry about this now. You'll be able to make these adjustments after you've completed the preliminary curved path. Once you've finished the preliminary curved path, toggle back to the Direct Selection tool by holding down the Command key on Mac or Control key on Windows and click on one of the anchor points connected to a direction line which needs adjustment. If you've already deselected the path, you won't be able to see any of its anchor points. In that case, simply use the Direct Select tool and select one of the path's endpoints, thereby making all of the anchor points visible. Now go ahead and adjust the individual direction lines by dragging their handles. Let's finish up with part four. Make sure your stroke is set to black and fill to none. Select the rounded rectangle tool and starting at point A, Click and drag the mouse down and right to create the large rectangle. Now let's finish. Turn off visibility of the template layer. Choose the selection tool from the toolbox and select part 1. Increase its stroke weight to 20 point. Go ahead and increase the stroke weights of part 3 and part 4 to 20 point as well. No stroke should be applied to part 2. When you're done, deselect all paths. Next, select the curve path that we created in part three. From the menu bar, choose Filter, Stylize, Add Arrowheads. Let's set the arrowhead for the end of the path to None. 
At the start of the path, choose arrowhead number 9. We can preview our settings by checking Preview. Confirm that scale is set to 100% and click OK. Finally, select the large rectangle from Part 4. In the toolbox, double-click Fill Color. Let's choose a yellow from the color spectrum. Move your cursor over the large field of color and click on the exact color that you would like to choose. Click OK, and with the large rectangle still selected, let's go to the menu bar and choose Object, Arrange, Send to Back. Deselect, and you're done.